I'm David Lepofsky. I'm chair of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act Alliance. Our nonpartisan volunteer grassroots coalition advocates for accessibility for over 1.9 million Ontarians who have a physical, mental, sensory, intellectual, learning, or other disability. The Ontario government is spending billions of dollars on new public transit around Ontario. It is very important to ensure that it's fully accessible to passengers with disabilities. Often, people with disabilities are older and poorer. For them, public transit is often the only way to get around. The Ontario government has not ensured that new public transit stations are fully accessible to passengers with disabilities. It's good that they tried to consider accessibility, but they made many significant and unnecessary errors. If you don't have a disability now, these barriers will hurt you later because everyone is bound to get a disability as they age. Getting older is the most common cause of disability. I start with some barriers that hurt blind people like me and people with poor eyesight. Other barriers I'll show you hurt people with other kinds of disabilities. Let's look at disability barriers at the recently renovated Go Transit part of Union Station. At two stops along the new commuter train line from Union Station to Pearson International Airport, called the UP Express, and at four of the six new stops on the Toronto Transit Commission's subway, from the Downsview Park Station to the end of the line at the Vaughan Metropolitan Station. Using a white cane. How do we blind people find our way using a white cane? I use a white cane like an extension of my finger, pointing to the ground in front of my feet. It taps the ground where I will step. It lets me know if it's safe to take the next step forward. To find my way, I use my cane to find landmarks to guide me. As I walk along this King Street subway station platform, my cane follows the wall on my right side. We call that a shoreline. Now, as I walk along the sidewalk outside, my cane follows the shoreline along the side of the sidewalk, where the sidewalk meets grass. Leaning Pillars They recently renovated the Toronto Union Station's Go Transit area. On most of the train platforms, they added several leaning pillars. These don't go straight up and down. They unsafely lean into the path of travel at head level. My white cane taps the ground and tells me there's no obstacle there. It feels safe to walk forward, but then my shoulder or head hits the leaning pillar. That's not safe. Leaning pillars were installed right where passengers pile onto and off of trains. There's no good reason for ever installing pillars that lean at an angle into the path of travel. Design professionals need to get over their recent fetish of thinking that leaning pillars look cool. We're showing you examples of three other buildings with angled pillars in Toronto. Tactile walking surface indicators. A landmark that can really help me is a distinctive cane detectable surface marking called a tactile walking surface indicator. It is installed on the ground. These can help in two ways. First, they can guide me through a large open area that has no other cane detectable landmarks. They're my yellow brick road showing me the way. That helps with wayfinding. Second, a tactile walking surface indicator can be a safety warning. It warns me that the next step can be dangerous. These are helpful at places like at the top of a flight of stairs or along the edge of a train platform. These tactile walking surface indicators need to have good color contrast, like this one in a park path in Japan. That helps people with low vision, people with cognitive issues, and frankly, everybody. Wayfinding done wrong. It's good that there's a tactile walking surface indicator as a wayfinding path on the York University subway station platform. It's supposed to guide me along the platform, but it has a serious problem. I come downstairs to the platform. This tactile path guides me forward a few meters and then right into a wall. I have literally run into this design mistake in more than one Toronto subway station. Missing tactile walking surface indicators. When I walk through a station's huge concourse with large open areas, 
It would really help if the floor had a cane detectable wayfinding path. Yet there are none to guide me through the new Union Station Go Transit area or the remodeled Bloor or Weston UP stations. This makes them much harder to navigate. Proper color contrasted tactile markings on the floor would also help anyone who doesn't know their way around the huge station. As has been done in Holland, as I show here. For safety, it's important to have a cane detectable tactile walking surface indicator with proper color contrast all along the edge of a train platform. This helps prevent people from falling over the edge, including us blind people, people with low vision, and people who are walking and talking and not looking where they're going. It's good that the new TTC stations, like this one at the New York University Station, have these tactile warnings on the edge of their platforms. They are common now in Toronto's subway stations. When my cane finds that tactile warning, I know to instantly slow down to avoid falling over the edge. Here is an unsafe platform at the renovated Union Station Go Transit area. Its edge doesn't have tactile safety warnings. Here's something weird at the Bloor and Weston stations on the UP Express line. These tactile surface safety warnings are provided at some points along the platform but not along the edge of the platform that I have to travel along to get to the UP Express platform. They should be along the entire edge of any platform. If I find the safety warning at one point on a platform, I'll expect that they're installed along the entire length of that platform. If my cane then finds a platform edge with no tactile warning, that would be a shock. Another place where we need a tactile marking on the ground for safety is when I come to a boundary between a safe pedestrian sidewalk and an adjacent road or driveway. If there's a raised curb step, then my cane can detect it. However, where the sidewalk slopes down from the sidewalk to the road, I won't know I've walked into an unsafe space. We need a color contrasted tactile marking on the ground. You sometimes see those at newly constructed intersections, but unfortunately all too infrequently in Canada. Here is a dangerous situation. I walk along the exit path from the Bloor Station on the UP Express Line. It leads out to the Kiss and Ride passenger pickup area. I walk from the sidewalk right into the driveway. Because there's no tactile warning, I don't know I've walked into the path where cars can drive. There should be a tactile walking surface indicator there to keep everyone safe. Unsafe platform design. Here's another accessibility and safety problem. All six new TTC subway stations have a platform design that is unsafe for blind people and a number of others. Each station has only one platform. It's in the middle of the station. It services trains going in both directions. There's a northbound track on one side of the platform and a southbound track on the other side of the platform. Here it is at the Vaughan Metropolitan Center Station, the Highway 407 Station, the Pioneer Village Station, the York University Station, the Finch Station, and the Downsview Park Station. What's the problem? I'll show you at the old Osgood station. There's a dangerous drop-off down to the subway tracks on both sides of the platform. When I have to walk along the length of the platform, the platform has no wall or other safe place for me to shoreline along. That is a safe distance away from the platform's edge. I need one for my cane to follow. The only continuous shoreline to follow is to walk right beside the platform's edge. That's unsafe. TTC warns passengers to stay away from the platform's edge. I find walking along one of these center platforms very stressful. My heart is often pounding. When a subway train comes booming into or out of the station, the rush of noise and air makes this even harder. When two trains are booming into the station from opposite directions at the same time, it's even worse. I've been totally blind for about 40 years. My white cane skills are pretty good. This must be even harder for someone who lost their eyesight more recently. We need a wall or other safe shoreline to follow that's a safe distance from the platform edge. Sometimes there's a short wall that runs along the platform for a few meters, as I show here at the old Osgood station. But after that, I'm in open space again, with no shoreline available except the unsafe edge of the platform. There are obstacles all over, like pillars, in unpredictable places. As I said earlier, when they try to solve this with a tactile walking surface indicator on the platform, I found that at times these can walk you into a wall. 
there's a much safer way to design transit stations. TTC has used that safer design many times in the past. Here is the decades-old King Street subway station. It uses a safer design. Let's call it the side platform design. At the safer King Street station, there are two platforms, not one. The tracks are in the middle of the station between the two platforms. The northbound platform is beside the northbound track. The southbound platform is beside the southbound track. It's much safer because each platform has a wall a safe distance away from the edge, which runs the whole length of the platform. I can use that wall as a safe shoreline without ever getting near the platform's edge. This is much safer for all passengers. While waiting for a train, we can stand with our back to the wall, well away from the platform's edge, without worrying that there's a dangerous drop-off right behind us. When the train comes, I walk forward, safely find the subway door, and walk into the train car. If I take a train to this station, I safely walk off the train and head to the safe wall, which is in front of me. I can then use it as a safe shoreline. This is much safer and easier to use for everyone, including people with kids and those with balance issues or cognitive issues or dementia. The Ontario government knew all about these design issues long before these new subway stations were opened. In 2014, we revealed the same problem with the government's plans for the new Eglinton Crosstown light rail transit line now under construction. Many of that line's stations were planned to have the unsafe center platform design. Here is the Toronto Star's website reporting on that problem back in August of 2014. We didn't know back then that the new TTC stations from Downsview Park to Vaughan Metropolitan Center were also planned to have the same troubling center platform design. They could have made things better from an accessibility and safety perspective. They could have installed a partition or thin wall down the length of the center platform from one end to the other with a few openings along the way in the middle. That could be used as a safe shoreline. Here's such a partition on the platform by Track 24 at the Via Rail part of Union Station. We gave the government that idea in 2014 for its Eglinton Crosstown stations. Sadly, the government did not take up that idea for any of the new stations from Downsview Park to Vaughan Metropolitan Center. Reaching different station levels. It's good that these new stations have elevators, but we found problems here too. York University subway station has two entrances. Only one has an elevator. The other entrance is inaccessible if you can't use stairs or an escalator. If the one elevator at the accessible entrance breaks down, which happens too often at TTC, then the entire station becomes inaccessible. I hope it doesn't happen on an exam day. Here's a December 2017 Toronto Star article showing a Vaughan station elevator already out of service. They should have installed elevators at both entrances. Here at the inaccessible entrance, it looks like space was allowed for an elevator, but none was installed. Where elevators are installed, it's good that they have braille on elevator buttons and an automated voice that announces the floor when you arrive. However, we discovered some instances where the braille on the button says something different than the print or the voice that announces the floor. That's confusing. On this elevator at the Bluer UP Express Station, one floor is mislabeled in Braille. For the ground floor, in print it says G. The elevator's voice says ground floor. Ground floor. But the Braille says main. We found the same problem at the UP Express Weston Station and the York University Subway Station. I run into this in building after building like this one at the Ryerson University Student Learning Center. For some people with disabilities like me, stairs are an option to go from one floor to another. Staircase railings are an important safety feature for everyone, and especially for people who need support when walking on stairs, and for people with vision loss. I use them for directional guidance. The main staircase inside the York University subway station has really bad railings. They aren't consistently placed at a right angle to the stairs. Instead, at least some of the railings are unsafely skewed at a weird angle to the stairs. I try to use the railing to guide me up or down the stairs. The railing forces my feet off at an angle. It's horrible. 
These are bad for blind people and for people who are unsteady on their feet. Don't try using this railing if you're going down these stairs in a hurry. We also expect and need a railing to continue all the way up or down the stairs. At the York University Station, some of the railings just stop midway as you go down and reach a landing. Walking forward on the landing to continue down the stairs, there's no railing for me to find. That's bizarre and disorienting. For accessibility and safety, people with low vision need proper color contrast to see important features like those on stairs or on a ramp. Here is a ramp inside the new York University subway station. It has no proper color contrasting between the railings on the wall or at the bottom or on landings. Why did they include proper color contrast at the top of the ramp but not at landings or at the bottom? Being able to find the handrail is a safety issue. So is being able to see where the slope starts and stops on a ramp. Here we now add some color contrast to this ramp. That shows how it should have been done. While we're at it, color contrast is needed at other locations, like entrance doors and elevator doors, and at buttons we need to use. The power door operators at the Bloor UP Express Station door do not have color contrast between the button and the wall. That makes them harder to find for people with low vision and people with some other disabilities, like cognitive and some learning disabilities. Here, we add to the picture the proper color contrasting for these buttons that should have been used. No audible announcement for next train. At the renovated Weston and Bluer UP stations, an overhead screen shows when the next train is coming. That's helpful information especially if you need extra time to get in position to board the next train when it arrives. If you can't see or read those video monitors, like me, you're out of luck. There's no audible announcement of this. Emergency call boxes. What do you do if you have an emergency in a public transit station? It's good that there are some emergency call boxes in the UP stations. But here are some at the Weston station and the Bloor station. They have signs in print, but no braille, or in many cases, even words on the signage. There's no audio prompt that an emergency call box is there. Getting in and out of doors. Automatic power doors make it easier for everyone to get into a public transit station. It's good that the New York University subway station has automatic power doors. They automatically slide open when you walk close to them. You don't have to find and press a button. The Bloor Street UP Express station's power doors are not automatic. To open the door off Bloor, you must grope around and find a button which is too far from the door. When that door swings open, it can hit someone. Other problems happen when the buttons aren't near the door, easy to find and reach, or aren't in a consistent, predictable location from one door to the next. Here's a power door operator at the UP Express Weston station at the ticket building that's far from the door. Here's one at a weather shelter at that station at track level. It's mounted on the wall to the left of the power door on the latch side. But here on the inside of the shelter, the power door button is on the right side of the door near the hinge if you are going out of a weather shelter. At the Bloor UP Express Station, the button is on a little pillar called a bollard next to the door but on the hinge side. It's confusing. Their positions are all inconsistent and unpredictable. Accessibility problems at pay machines. The Ontario government custom designed a new Presto smart card and payment machines for paying transit fares. It promised that these would be accessible to passengers with disabilities. When the government unveiled Presto in 2010, the AODA Alliance revealed significant accessibility problems. The government denied it but later committed to fix it. Yet before fixing it, the government deployed inaccessible Presto machines. These machines had information that came up on a screen, but with no audio output or braille. The government pressured local transit, like TTC, to deploy Presto before the government made it accessible. More recently, the government started rolling out newer Presto machines with more accessibility features than the original totally inaccessible ones. Yet these newer machines still have some problems. Let's take a look at the more accessible Presto machines. Even these are not all the same. Here's a more accessible machine at the new Vaughan Metropolitan Center subway station. Figure one out in one station and you may have to start over when you encounter a different model 
at another station. It's good that after our pressure, they added braille markings and an earphone jack for audio instructions. But how do I know there's an earphone jack? I wouldn't know just by encountering this Presto machine at the Union Station Go Transit concourse. You have to feel all over it until you find what feels like a headphone jack. It only has a tactile symbol of a headphone, but no braille. In contrast, right next to it is another Presto machine, which has a braille label for the headphone jack. I plug my earphones into the earphone jack on the Presto machine at the Union Station Go Transit station. At first, I hear a buzz. I'm not sure if it's broken. I waited. Eventually, it started talking. It tells me that if I need help, to speak to a customer service representative. But none are immediately nearby. There's no information on where to find them in this huge station. They are quite far off to the left, along the back wall. I'd never find that from this machine on my own, without any directions. One confusing and unclear braille label on a Presto machine at the Union Go Transit concourse says either contact less or contact and then the letter S in italics. What does that mean? On a Presto machine at the Weston UP Express station, one braille label next to the earphone jack says BA volume. What is that? On this Presto machine at the Union Station Go Transit concourse, most of the braille shown here is hard to read. Back on the Presto machine at the UP Express Weston station, there's some braille on the side at a bizarre angle. I contort my arm to read it. This Presto machine is placed at the top of a ramp. Passengers needing more time to use it block the ramp. When I hunch over to read the braille, I block the ramp. Public washrooms. Here's the washroom sign at the new Vaughn subway station washroom. If you can read print, you know if it's the men's room or the women's room. But not if you need braille, because none was provided. It's far more common to find braille public washroom signage in the U.S. than in Canada. A braille bathroom sign only costs a few dollars. Getting to York University TTC Station. At York University, this is York Lanes, a main hub of activity. It has an indoor food court and shopping area. The obvious place for the York University subway station to exit is indoors in York Lanes. But that's not where the subway exits. Instead, the closest subway entrance is 35 meters away, outside, across a street. On a snowy day, passengers must go outside and slip-slide along ice and snow if it isn't yet cleared. There is no cane-detectable tactile wayfinding outside to direct me along the route from the York Lanes exit to the York University subway station entrance. I have to walk through this big paved open area with no continuous shoreline to direct me. Let's take a quick look at the other entrance to the York University subway station, the one that is inaccessible because it has no elevator. It's good that a sign outside that entrance says that there is an accessible entrance elsewhere. But where did they put this important sign? It's right beside the automatic doors to the entrance. When the doors slide open, which is often the case, you can't see the sign. And the signed text is so small that many people might miss it. If I want to go from the inaccessible entrance to the accessible entrance, it's about 75 meters away. There are no accessible rest benches along the way for a person with a fatiguing condition. When crossing the road here, it's good that outside this inaccessible entrance, there's a curb cut at the roadside. This lets someone using a wheelchair, scooter, or walker get down to the road level to cross the street. But when you cross to the other side of the street, there's no curb cut to let you get back up to the sidewalk. UP Express Junction with TTC Subway The new UP Express was meant to be a great way for travelers to get to and from Canada's busiest airport. If you are not downtown, you're supposed to be able to switch from the UP Express line to the TTC Bloor Subway at the Dundas West Station, or vice versa. Switching from the UP Express line Bloor Station 
to the TTC subway Dundas West Station is not pretty for passengers with disabilities or indeed for anyone. Going home from the airport and want to transfer from the UP Express line to the Bluer subway line? You must get off the UP line at its Bluer station, leave the station, go outside to Bluer Street, schlep your suitcases and kids, walk west 180 meters to the intersection of Bluer Street West and Dundas West, cross Dundas West, then walk north 22 meters along Dundas West to get to the TTC Dundas West subway station. According to Google, it's a total of 200 meters. There are no moving sidewalks or people movers to get you from one station to the other. I hope you don't have a disability that limits your ability to walk this distance hauling your luggage. I hope it isn't raining or snowing or freezing cold with ice on the ground. And I hope the walk isn't too tiring for you because there are no benches along the way to rest. There's no directional signage and no color contrasted directional tactile wayfinding along the way to direct you once you leave either station. Many, such as new visitors to Toronto, will have trouble finding the way. As examples, there are no color contrasted cane detectable tactile warnings when crossing the street at the intersection of Bloor and Dundas West, or when crossing the bus driveway beside the Dundas West subway station. The sidewalk is not in good repair. That's a problem for people with various disabilities and a potential tripping hazard for everyone. Two years after the UP Express Line opened, it's good that the Ontario government belatedly announced plans to build an underground link between these two stations. But three years after the UP Express Line opened, we still don't know when this will happen, or what it will look like, or what accessibility features it will include. For proper accessibility, this should have been part of the station from the day it opened. Conclusion Watch how these problems compound at the new York University subway station. It has one of two entrances that is completely inaccessible. If one elevator breaks down, the whole station becomes inaccessible. The route to either of the station's entrances forces you outdoors, even in lousy weather. There is no wayfinding guidance to get to the accessible entrance door. The inaccessible entrance has a sign warning us that it is inaccessible. But the sign is blocked from view whenever the entrance doors are open. Inside are unsafe skewed railings on a major staircase. An unsafe center platform with dangerous drop-offs on both sides, no safe shoreline to follow, and tactile wayfinding on the platform that walks me right into a wall. Ontario's building code and accessibility standards are woefully inadequate. A new building can comply with them and still have serious accessibility problems. Making this worse, these accessibility requirements are inadequately enforced. The Ontario government must strengthen these laws substantially and substantially increase their enforcement. Ontario's design professionals like architects clearly need much better training on the accessibility of the buildings that they design. The Ontario government must also revitalize and significantly strengthen its implementation of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. That law requires the government to lead Ontario to become fully accessible by 2025, 20 years after it was enacted. Ontario is not on schedule, and Ontario's public transit accessibility regulations don't address the barriers that we show you in this video. In early 2018, a government-appointed advisory committee made recommendations to revise Ontario's transit accessibility standard. These recommendations are weak. They would not ensure that the barriers in this video are removed or prevented. Even more massive new public transit infrastructure is being designed and built around Ontario right now. Here we show you some government websites from May 2018. These show that there are some 350 public transit stations or other public transit infrastructure projects now under development. We need an immediate, independent, and public audit of the accessibility of those projects. Learn more at www.aodaalliance.org. Write us at aodafeedback at gmail.com. 
Follow us on Twitter at AODA Alliance. Tweet your own pictures or videos of accessibility problems you found in Ontario. Use the hashtag AODA Fail. Let the world know about AODA Fails and AODA Wins that you encounter. For our earlier video about accessibility problems at the Ryerson University Student Learning Center, go to YouTube, search for Ryerson and AODA Alliance. For our earlier video about accessibility problems at the Centennial College Culinary Arts Center, go to YouTube, search for Centennial College and AODA Alliance. Thanks very much for watching, and please help spread the word about these videos on accessibility. For a shorter version of this video, go to YouTube and search on Transit and AODA Alliance and short version.